Hello, welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube where it's all about embroidery. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to convert a logo into embroidery. Okay, let's go ahead, let's bring in our artwork here. What I wanna do, I wanna size it up to its correct width and height. So we're gonna put a width of three inches. Okay, we're gonna kinda aim for uh, maybe something uh, like a polo shirt or even a hat. So we want to dim our artwork just so when we're tracing it, we can kinda see over it. And really this video is kinda for both embroiderers, digitizers, and also business owners that are interested in, in ordering embroidery. Okay, sometimes if you kinda know the behind the scenes of embroidery, it's easier to talk to an embroiderer or it's easier to place an order with a embroidery shop. Okay, that way you can come prepared with information and you can provide certain little small details to an embroiderer that a lot of people don't really think about. So here we have our Honda logo, all right? And the name of the game here, the way I like to set up my designs, I want to have minimum cuts as possible. Anytime we have to cut our thread in the middle of a project, so on the backside of your design, okay? It might start getting bulky with so many tie-ins, tie-outs, knots, okay? Knots everywhere. So what I like to focus, okay? What I like to focus is minimum, minimum cuts, minimum bulkiness on the backside, okay? So even though we're zoomed in this close, okay? Nobody sees the design this close, all right? Let me show you. This is kind of like a one-to-one -one distance here, all right? So always remember when you are super zoomed in, okay? Usually I'm working like this close, okay? I'm usually at anywhere between uh, 600 to 1200 in, in percentage, when I'm zooming in. So I'm gonna use the column B and you'll see why this column B is so useful. So you trace one side at a time. So since this is a straight line, I could just make one straight line coming here. All right, enter. And now I do the second side, all right? That's why this uh, tool is so popular, all right? So this logo, it goes straight for a while and then it starts curving. So you wanna know where do you start curving all right, so it looks like right here. And then we start curving, okay? And of course, I like to work with sand stitches, okay? It just gives it a, a little bit more boldness. Actually, let me bring this in as much as possible. All right, and then I got it in here. Straight line. All right, so that's our first side here. Let's check that out, bam, 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 all right. And what you can do, a lot of time digitizing is just uh, duplicating since we have symmetrical sides. We just could duplicate that and bring it on over here. All right, so we could just grab this, pull it to the side. Uh, that's the good thing about logos. A lot of times logos, they're designed to be symmetric then I'm gonna do this middle part, okay? This center, the center of the, the bridge of the H, we do have the curve here, okay? What we wanna do, we wanna measure what's the distance of this bridge. So we're at 2.34, okay, pretty small. Okay, what I like to do, if, if we're getting very narrow, narrow, uh, thin lines, I like to just give it a little bit more uh, distance or make it a little bigger than what it really is all right and I'll show you what I'm talking about here so what we can do we can just use our column a okay which is our most common tool for digitizing all right I just want to get a nice clean trace here all right, and then up here. All right, I've seen this H digitized so many different ways, okay? But I like to keep it, all right? I like to keep it with sand stitches. And what you can do here, okay? You can over-exaggerate with the pull comp, 
Okay, I could put like a 55.55 pull comp, all right? And that just gives it a little bit more, uh, it, it kind of makes it stand out a, a tad bit, all right? That way, this bridge, it doesn't kind of get lost when it starts pulling in. All right, now what we want to do, we want to confirm our sequence, all right? What's going first, what's going second? Uh, what I want, I want this H, this bridge, to kind of go last, okay? Because I want this little handles here to go under our bridge, all right? So what I'm going to do, okay, you kind of want to plan out how your whole route, okay? The whole route, that way we don't have any cuts. I'm going to add a running stitch. It's kind of like a um, tag down slash global underlay. Okay. Okay, so we're going to run here. After here, after the left hand side of the H, I'm going to walk my way on up. Start up here. All right, I'm just making walking stitches to the next side. And this, and then the bridge last. All right, let's see. So here I got my walking stitch, left side. Then I walk my way up to the right side, do this side, and then do the bridge of the H. All right, let's go right there. Okay, I like that. All right, uh, I've seen the Honda sign. Um, I've seen it with a tatami fill, okay, fill stitch. I'm not a big fan of the tatami fill on logos. I try to avoid it as much as possible. So that's why here I have it all in a sand stitch, okay. And then here you could kind of see my my sand stitches up here. They're kind of un underneath the bridge, all right. That way everything could kind of look solid together. All right, so we got that. We got this part. Now, let's do the border. One thing you kind of got to think about and you kind of got to analyze is how thick, okay, how thick is your borders? 2.2 millimeters, okay, which pretty thin, all right, pretty thin, especially there are some areas that are thinner, for example, here, all right, 1.41. If we keep it like that, if we keep it at that distance, uh, your your lines are gonna start getting lost in your fabric. So many times I've seen logos on on polo shirts, and the the fine details such as borders, little thin lines, they start disappearing. Okay, so you got to kind of keep in mind that if you go too small, so if we were to keep it at 1.4, we might start losing our details. Okay, 1.26 millimeters, it might get lost. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind. We're going to have to increase our distance, all right? We're going to have to make it a little bigger, all right? So I'll kind of, what I like to do, okay? I just like to trace it normal, all right? So we can, um, we can just trace this normal. And at the very end, we'll add a pull comp, okay? So right now, we're going to try to get as close as possible. And if we have to, we'll come back and edit anything that looks kind of out out of the ordinary. All right, so now this is where we check ourselves. All right, of course you can always get it more perfect, but that is absolutely fine right there. Okay, so we're good. Okay, maybe here I might open it up. So what you wanna do, H, okay, the reshape. And you can pull these nodes, you can pull them out a bit just to get a little finer curve. Let me see. If if you want to fix your angles, okay, so as you can see here, this one should be perfectly angled. It's at a 94, should be at a 90, okay. If we can always go back and adjust our angles. Okay, but I think we're all good right here. I don't want to keep it at this distance. So like I was saying before, it's a little too thin. All right, what you want to do, okay, we could just add pull comp here. Let's go pull comp. All right, I'm going to over-exaggerate this. 
all right I'm gonna give it a 5.5 five. all right it's gonna give it a little bit more boldness and what I want to do select everything except for the H and just make this a tad bit smaller holding shift so I could keep that ratio nice and perfect all right all right one thing we want to look at here it's telling me I have five trims okay so right here on the right hand side I'm always keeping an eye out on my trims uh, I should only have two cuts so one cut on the H and one on the border so let's go ahead, apply close to the joint, bam, two, two trims, all right? And that all works because I sequenced it correctly, all right? Once everything is sequenced correct, then it's easy to put the apply close to the joint. All right, now let's focus on the text. I think the text, all right, this is make or break on all logos. You want to make sure the text is very clean, very legible. All right, so we want to focus on our serifs here. Make sure our serifs are nice and clean. All right, we want to also focus on zero cuts. I like to use the column B setting, all right? So that allows me to do one side straight. Enter, and then you do the next side, all right? And I'm telling you, if you don't have if you don't have special features in your software, okay, if you're starting out and you have something basic, all right, everybody starts out with the basics of the basics. You just have to manually stitch out a lot of the a lot of the stitches. All right. So right here we have a serif. Okay. As you can see, we have four of the same serifs. So we can just duplicate. All right, and drag over here. All right, usually 99% of the time, it should line up pretty good. All right, now we grab both of these. Okay, duplicate those, flip, pull up. All right, and that should match right there. Bam, all right. So we got our serifs here. Let me see, perfect, perfect. Everything looking nice and good. Let's go ahead, let's create our columns here. So here I'm just using the regular column A. And really what you wanna do All right, so we got that there. All right, let's 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 work on these sequence, all right? Let's give it a different color. What I wanna do, I wanna, I want to digitize the serifs first. So these are the serifs, okay? I wanna digitize these first and then finish with the column. This is where our, we create our walking stitches. So I'm gonna start here, walk up here, all right, and then it's gonna stitch this and then it's gonna walk back up okay so I'm just kind of planning my whole route then I'm gonna go back up and then I'm gonna come here all right and then it's gonna finish here and then it's going to walk its way up here and let's create this right here and really what we're doing with these letters, okay, they're, it's pretty much just shapes that we're creating, okay. All right, there goes our H right there. All right, let me move the view down to the bottom. All right, so you can see some of the info on the top right. All right, so 
let's go ahead let's sequence this all right so i'm gonna go here here bam bam okay so let's go ahead apply closest joint and three trims all right so we already had two this is one right here and h yep i want to end right there all right we are good to go let's see okay so i have my column that's overlapping those so that should close up this should close up here that's tying in there going under going here all right and then this all right that's fine that we have this one on top okay but now from here we're gonna jump up here all right let's go ahead let's take care of this O here and I'm just gonna use the column stitch again all right so what I'm going to do create the first line and just go ahead we're just tracing here uh, the good thing about working on logos, corporate logos, especially if you're doing polo shirt, all right, if and when you digitize your logos and you got it nice and good, nice and perfect, all right, you're you're pretty much you're good with that logo. that logo is pretty much good forever like really what you're doing you're just changing out names all right employee names if they need names on their uniforms okay but for the most part once you got your logo nice and good okay uh so definitely we always want to sample out we want to stitch out sometimes there's little minor tweaks that we want to change okay All right, we want to get a good trace right here, and then we want to get a good overlap. All right, bam. All right, H. All right, we look good here. Okay, one thing that I like to do with the letter O's, okay, so we can create our guidelines here. We have our guidelines to kind of tell us our base of our fonts, but what I like to do I like to extend this a little bit more because O's, they like to kind of come in a bit. All right, so here I did the same thing on both sides. I'm gonna do the same thing here on the sides. I'm holding shift to kind of do it on both sides. Okay, so it kind of opens up the O's a bit because as you can see, this O is pulling through all the sides. All right, and then H, well, we actually want to start right here, okay? And we're going to put this O a little closer at the very end, just so we can jump from here to there. All right, so what we want to do here, we want to turn off our cut, trim after, bam, all right? So we have a jump from right here to right here. But we're gonna put the O a little closer to avoid it being so obvious. All right, same thing, let's do the N. Okay, the N, a little different, a little special letter. I like my Ns. Okay, let's do the serif. Okay, we can't really copy and paste the serif from the, from the H because it looks like it's a little thinner. All right, so sometimes it's just quicker to redo it all right let's create this column here T all right stop it right there then we're gonna do all this out of order and then we'll put it back in order in a bit we could copy and paste this one but let's just knock it out real quick all right sometimes it might be quicker just to do it and more accurate 
Oops. Got to start right here. Gonna kind of zone out for a bit. All right, so if I go quiet for a bit, it's because I'm just kind of zoned out. Alright, so here I just want to make sure my angles is going exactly at a 180. Okay, so from left to right. All right, let's put this in order, okay? Um, what we wanna do, we wanna go here first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Sequence that, bam, all right? And, bam, bam. Let's apply close to joint. All right, so we have our cut up here. Yep, good to go. All right, and we want this H to end right here. Okay, have that cut right there. Okay, we'll put these a little closer just so it won't be so noticeable. Okay, because we want to avoid ugly jump stitches and we want to avoid cuts. All right, let's do the D. I want to Go from here and walk my way up. So we have a very nice feature here that says select by stitch type. So we're gonna go satin. Okay, so it's going to select all my sand stitches. All right, and this way we could all set up all our underlay. could all be the same. So we're going to put a center run with a zigzag. All right, that should be good there. That covers my underlay. Uh, let's check any push pull. Okay, we already took care of our H. I mean our, our O. Okay, H. Um, what I want to look for are these where we have our connectors connecting with so here we have like three objects right we have three objects here okay what I want to do T is this is gonna push a bit this is gonna pull a bit so what I want to do I want to pull this up a bit okay that way when this when this diagonal comes up okay it's gonna push up a bit all right, so that's compensating for there. All right, bam, bam. That's fine there. We could actually keep this a little up here. Mm, just bring it up a tad bit. All right, actually shift, so both sides. All right, just a little tad bit. Then the A, same thing I'm going to do with the A. Okay, it's going to push up a bit. Let's pull this up a bit. All right, yep, yep. Bam, that's all good right there. All right, we are looking good. Let's make sure we are centered. Zero, 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 bam. Okay, we have four trims. So I introduced a trim. Let's find this trim. Okay, uh, right here. 
Okay, right here. That's how we find our trims. So what we could say is connectors, trim after, off. All right, that just turns it off. So let's replay uh, three trims. So I'm good. I could click out of this. Let's click out of all this. And okay, let's see it kind of a little slower. All right, so I just want to make sure the stud. I just want to make sure my sequence and everything is exactly as we dialed it up. My underlay is good. My sequence is good. All right, now it's gonna do the bridge here, bam. Cut there, all right, that's fine. That'll be my first cut. Okay, I'm gonna have three cuts. Now it's going to do the border or the outline of the H. Okay, put the underlay. All right, let's speed this one up. This is pretty much straightforward here. Then it's gonna stop. I'm gonna have a slight overlap. All right, let's check out the letters. Mm -hmm. All right, there's just one little thing that I'm looking at right now that I might wanna. All right, I, I just noticed that my camera turned off, but let me just finish watching this replay right here. All right. So right right when I see that my uh, replay is good to go, I'm ready to send it to the machine so I can do my initial, so I can do my initial sample. I like the order that this is kind of running in. All right, it's looking real good. Bam. All right, let's go. Let's test it out because we can say it's perfect all day on the screen, but we won't know until we stitch it out. So let's go ahead. Let's take it to the machine and let's see how we did. All right, I stitched out my sample run and I used a polo shirt fabric for my sample and it came out nice and clean. Let's go ahead and zoom in super close. And what I'm looking out for is to make sure I don't have any gaps and all my lines are nice and straight and that my text is nice and sharp and evenly lined up. Usually on the first sample, you can always find little minor details to adjust. But overall, I think we're looking good right here. All right, so I wanna thank you for stopping by. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.